Hi everybody, my name is Sarah. I am the owner of Sephira's Den Dragons and today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about uh, making your own dragon yearling. Um, this design is really great because it's the design I started with. Um, it's a really simple basic design but you can dress it up a lot of different ways. There's a lot of room for um, personal style. So I have a, a couple little examples here of some dragons I did. As you can see, they're similar in the shape, but they're different. Um, one has little eyes and the other has little black eyes. One has bubbles, one has an octopus, different things. But the base of the dragon is, is exactly the same. So I'm going to be showing you how to do that today. Um, I, you do not need any tools to do this uh, tutorial. If you do want to use tools or if you're curious about the tools I use, I have a link to another tutorial going into um, the my go-to tools. So go watch that. Um, but for right now, I'm just going to go on and get into the dragon. So I've got two balls of clay rolled out. This is one block. This is about three quarters of a block and what I mean by a block is just one of these little bricks okay so I just break it off and I have my body in my head um, to start with the body I'm gonna take this ball of clay and I'm gonna make a cone and if some of you guys know what a cone shape is great go ahead if not I'm gonna do a, a brief description so I'm going to take my hand and apply diagonal pressure downwards, okay? I'm going to take the palm of my hand and I'm just going to roll, okay? So you can start to see this little cone shape happening. So I'm going to go on and finish um, the right half of my body and I'll be right back. Okay, so I pretty much got... Uh, the lower half of my body done. This is going to be his tail. So if you notice there's this little stub here. Um, if you just want to take your finger and do the exact same thing you're doing with the palm of your hand, apply diagonal pressure, you'll get a more defined point. Okay. <coughs> so now what I'm going to do is the exact same thing on the other side to make the neck. So I'm going to take my um, index finger and just apply some diagonal pressure downwards. Now I only like to do this on one half of my dragon's body because it kind of forms this little slope of a belly and then it leaves the side flat. So then he kind of has a back. So I'm just gonna kind of Okay, so now our dragon has a belly and a tail. So all we're gonna do is take our index finger or whatever and place it kind of right where the belly ends, okay? And I'm just gonna push down and up and create a pretty sharp indentation um, to show the crease of his tail, okay? And then this is going to be the neck. Now, you can pinch outwards if you want to kind of go on and save yourself a little bit of grace time um, with fooling with the neck and attaching the head and so on and so forth to make a little kind of platform for it, okay? Because otherwise, you will spend a ton of time fidgeting with it. Okay, so now we've got our body and I'm gonna move on to the head. Okay, so now we have our body ready, okay? So I'm just gonna set that off to the side. Um, I have another ball already conditioned and everything ready to go. If you need advice on conditioning clay, I'll attach another tutorial all about that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the ball and I'm just going to pinch on the sides with my uh, middle finger and my thumb. I'm going to go with my other hand with my index finger and my thumb, whatever's comfortable for you. And I'm just going to start evenly pinching, okay? 
So as you can see, it's kind of, it looks a little bit like a cube. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pinching downwards or forwards better. And you can kind of play around once you kind of get a shape started. If you want to just use these two, that's fine. Um, and work my way down into the shape up ahead. You can pull a little bit or do whatever is most comfortable, but this is the general shape that you want, okay? Um, you can also put it down um, on your surface and just kind of even it out a little bit if it's a little bit uneven, okay? So this is the top of his head and these are the sides. So what I'm going to do now is... Um, go and make eye, eye sockets for him. So I'm going to take this tool. It's a dotting tool. It's the medium one. Uh, if you don't have this, that's fine. Um, but I'm just going to show this for this purpose. So I'm going to take it and find where I want to put my eye socket on his head and just press inwards and kind of work my tool back and forth um, until I get a a pretty nice indentation. You don't want it too deep, but you don't want it too shallow. So just kind of play with it a little bit. And then I'm just going to kind of take a mental note of where my eye socket is on this side and then go to the other side and make a little indentation. See if that looks kind of even. Look at it head on. Um, and if that looks even to you, go on and make your eye socket. It doesn't matter if they're completely even. It is completely okay if they're not. You just kind of work in there. Okay. Wait, this one's a little, see mine's a little smaller. So I'm going to, there we go. So we have two eye sockets. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is reshape my head a little bit. And I have two balls of black clay already rolled out. Um, they're pretty small and they might not be perfect the first time you do it and that's okay. Um, and all I'm going to do is just go in and fit that ball of clay into the, into the little indentation we made, okay? You don't have to really push it in there. The clay kind of bonds to itself. So I'm going to do that on the other side and just kind of slip it in. And then you can look at it from the front and make sure that it's even in the size you like. Now I'm gonna go into the eyelids and how to make that. Okay, so we've got our eyes already made and pushed into our little dragon's head. Uh, now we're gonna make the eyelids, which is something I really like about this dragon is the eyes might be plain, but the eyelids can really bring different expressions and emotions uh, to your dragon. So we have four little balls rolled out, um, all pretty much the same size. You can play with the sizes and just kind of pick what's right for you. So just like what we did with the body, I'm going to take a roll or a little ball and I'm just going to start tapering it down on one side. Okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing because I want it to kind of slope. So I'm going to go on the other side and taper that side. Okay. So I went on in the middle as well and just kind of ran my finger over it just to kind of not make such a, a sharp point. So now we have this little um, roll rolled out and this is going to be his top eyelid. So it's kind of hard to see but what I'm going to do is place my my uh, roll diagonally and about halfway width of his eye. So I'm just going to place that and then oop, it might slip and then just kind of shape it to how you want. So I like the corner of my eye to be pretty even with the center. Um, the back is a little bit long for me so what I'm just gonna do is pinch off a little bit and then 
thin it down, pinching between my fingers. So then you get a nice little tapered point. And then I'm just going to press that in, okay? So we've got the top eyelid now. Now we're going to take another ball of clay and we're going to do the exact same thing for the bottom eyelid. So I'm going to go and taper on the right side. Okay, and now I'm going to taper on the left side. And then just roll in the middle. So now I'm going to attach this. Have it join with the other corner. Just kind of push it up together. Now I want my dragon to look like he's smiling a little bit. So I'm going to have my eyelid kind of overlap the eye a little bit on the bottom eyelid, but artist preference. And the back is, again, a little bit too long, so I'm just going to pinch a little bit off and just smoosh it between my fingers a little bit. And bump it up, okay? So that is our eye. And then just go and do the same thing on the other side. Aiden has a booger. <laughs> okay, all right. So now I've got my other eye made. Okay, and that's kind of what it looks like. And you can play with the lower eyelid, make him look super cheeky or open his eye a little bit more. It's really up to you. Um, and if you see that gap down there... Um, where his eye kind of shows through, I will show you a way to cover that in my um, uh, stylistic choice tutorial. Um, if your eyelids aren't the same uh, length or, or width or whatever, it's not that big of a deal. I'll show you a way to cover that up as well. So we are now ready to attach our dragon's head to his body. This can be a little tricky, not gonna lie. Um, you may want to take your clay and just kind of get it a little bit warm, rub your thumb over it, do whatever you got to do. Um, I splayed my neck out a little bit to make it easier so he's kind of got a platform, a little divot to already go on and kind of rest his head in. So um, this is something where you're just going to have to play with it. I'm sorry, I got to move my fingers. Um on how to attach the head. Uh, you can take your fingers and really work that clay up into his neck or into the back of his head and then take some of the clay from the back of his head and work it down. Um, you may end up smooshing a little bit of his head. That's okay, not the end of the world. I have found most of my security comes from the back of the head. So just really, you got to be a little bit aggressive with it. And if you end up smooshing your body a little bit, that's okay. I'll show you how to fix that. So I'm going to go on and get the rest of his head attached and I will be back. We've got the head attached to the body. All right. Now. I cannot stress enough, if you are just starting out with this design, if you are just starting with polymer clay or both, be patient with yourself on this step. When I started, it took me a good 15 to 20 minutes to get the head attached and then to reshape the body a little bit. If your body does get smooshed or funky or wonky in any way, just kind of stretch it back out and then pinch towards the base of the neck to kind of give it that nice little tapered look again. So now we're going to talk about the wings. Um, there are a couple ways you can do the wings. I like to keep a very basic design because um, it's a pretty basic dragon. So I'm going to go on and get my clay conditioned and then we'll start. So now I have um, my clay conditioned and uh, in this little square form like you would if you have a pasta machine. If you want to run it through your pasta machine, go for it. I like using my clay roller because I like to use different um, 
uh, thicknesses and I like to just kind of play around with it um, spur of the moment kind of so all you just got to do is roll this out And if you want a really thick wing, don't roll it too much. I like a little bit of a medium thick wing um, because I don't bend my wings on this design. Uh, so you can go really thick wings, it doesn't matter. So I've got it about to the thickness that I want. Uh, it would probably be a one or so on a pasta machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my ball tool that's in my other cup. And I like this technique because it's all freehand. This is your design, no stencils, no molds. I'm all about making your own things. So Ryan, if you want to come over here, what I'm going to do is draw my wing out. So I like to make a curved line like that with my ball tool and just kind of indent the clay and then another curved line so you have this kind of dome shape and then all you do is make one point and one point and just attach really simple um, now as you do more of these, you can play with the different size wing you like. If you like really small wings, really large wings, medium. This is just a really fast wing to show you guys kind of the technique. So then what I do is I take my clay pick or a toothpick or whatever you have handy and I cut my design out. Okay. So you just go and you follow the line that you made. Your clay may tug or pull or do that, and that's okay. You can smooth it out later. Okay. And then all you have to do is just peel the clay away, and you've got a wing. Now, as you can see, it's kind of scraggly and everything like that. All you have to do is just take it, smooth upwards and it'll fix that problem okay like so and then if your peak is a little wonky you just kind of play with it so now we have a little wing and you can put it up to your dragon oh yeah see that's really that's a cute size for him I like that Okay, so um, now what I'm going to do is condition my clay and show you how I'm going to make the exact same wing uh, on a next piece of clay. So now we have our little wing cut out, um, which is this little three-point shape. So I've gone on and rolled out my clay. Uh, if you really like your clay the exact same thickness, use a pasta machine. I don't really mind too much if one's thicker than the other. So what I'm going to do is just pop my little cutout on top of my clay. I'm going to grab my little ball tool. And I'm just going to go around the outside of my wing. Now, as you get better with this, or you know, you feel you're getting a more steady hand, you can just eyeball it. That's what I do now. Um, but for the beginning, tracing this is a really good technique to really train your hand. Um, and then just peel that off. And you have pretty much the same design. Now, it's okay if it's not completely perfect. Dragon wings are not perfect and symmetrical, which is awesome about them. So. But I would recommend if you want them really the same shape is go more towards the inter, inner part of your outline instead of the outer part because that will make your wing thicker. So we're just going to go through and cut this out. And periodically just clean off your clay pick because it might get a little grunge down. So 
So I've got this one cut out. Now, this wing is pretty thin. This one's a little bit thicker. Honestly, it doesn't matter. If you really, really, really want your wings the same, then you can kind of pinch it and flatten it down, but it doesn't matter too much. So now I'm just going back through and tweaking my wing uh, from cutting it out and kind of smoothing out any rough edges. So now we've got two wing shapes, okay? They're pretty similar. So what I'm gonna do is take this uh, wooden pick thing. It's got two edges. Obviously I really like this one because there's a ton of black on it. Um, and I'm just gonna go through and start at the top, okay? And just drag down. Now, you're just gonna have to play, see what you really like. If you like that kind of edginess where the um, lines come off the wings and you get that kind of bumpy effect, that's awesome. If you like really straight lines, do that. It is up to you. Um, and you can just go through and pick off the little clay boogers, as I call them. Just get them out. And then you have these really cool little indentations on the wings uh, that give them some sort of depth. Um, I'm going to do that really quick on this wing. Okay. All right. So I've got my two wings now, and I've got um, my first set of indents. Now you can leave it like that with the indents if you want. That's fine. Or you can go back in with this uh, clay pick and just kind of go in between the lines a little bit. Start at different uh, heights, and it'll give your your dragon wing a little bit more dimension. They don't have to be straight lines. All right, so we've got our wing texture done. Now what I'm gonna do is take the scraps from my rolled out clay, just roll it into a ball, or just work it. However, you condition your clay is fine. Um, you don't need a really big one. Just about yay big. I don't know how to measure that, but it's not it's not too terribly big. And then all you're going to do is just roll it out into a snake. And just flat pressure. Um, I like to use that tapering technique and really taper at one end so then my wing has kind of a stopping and starting point. And then just kind of work your um, your roll out. This is these are going to be the spines for the wing. Okay, so you might have to go through and do this a couple of times, but I like to measure. Okay, this is roughly about how long I'm going to need for the outer ridge, so I'm just going to pinch that off and then taper the um, the the bottom edge again. So then there's that nice finished look. So what we're going to do. is um, attach one of the tapered ends on one side of the wing and just kind of tap lightly with your finger and push up if you want a little point or like a dew claw for your dragon. Just kind of push down. See, even then, like, it's still pretty, pretty long on one side. So I'm going to just break that off. And then like I did with the the eyelids just kind of roll it between my two fingers. Um, you can also kind of roll it, still too long, you can just kind of roll it on uh, your mat or whatever you do. Just kind of play with it. 
So now we have one outer spine done, okay? And then um, take your leftover rolled uh, clay and break off a little bit. If it seems like it's pretty thick, you don't need a big piece because we're just going to do the middle part. Okay, I like to work out to one taper um, so then it kind of tapers down to the wing point. And then all you want to do is just lay that taper point on the wing and, and just kind of tap it up. Now, if it's too long, break it off and then just kind of push it down. And if you have blending tools, work them together. Just kind of work it into that point. Okay. Now I'm going to go on and do the same thing to my other wing. Okay, so I just got done making my second wing. Um, I liked the longer look on one side, so I just kind of mirrored it uh, on the other. So then we kind of have these nice little uh, alternating wings. Um, so that's what the wings look like. Attaching them to the body is really, really simple. All you've got to do is pick the side that you want. Um, I want the longer side facing down. And also a little side note, if you want, you can take a ball tool and just blend this edge uh, to make it a little bit smoother. I've started doing that on my dragons. I really like the look. Uh, but for time's sake, I'm just not going to do that on this one. Um, so all you've got to do is just kind of position your wing how you would like it. Just kind of press it in there. Like so. And just go around on the other side. Press. Press it in there. And it's okay if they're dragging a little bit or uh, anything like that. I think it's kind of cute. It gives a little bit of character. And the thing that I like is the wings kind of camouflage any seams you might have from attaching the head to the body. So it's really kind of closed back there so you can't really see uh, and if you didn't get your seaming perfect or anything like that you can't really tell. So this is the finished dragon body. Um, I'm going to be going and making another tutorial on how to add different types of horns and accents and different ideas on how to really um, make your little dragon um, kind of personalized. So stick around and thanks for watching.